It's Mueller, not Mueller. How do people not get that by now? It's been two years. <sighs> Serenity now. The Mueller report is out. And what a long, strange trip it has been, people. An investigation that spanned almost two years. That cost at least $25 million. That saw 199 criminal counts against 37 people and entities. That produced seven guilty pleas and five prison sentences so far. So where exactly are we right now? That's a good question. Let's run through some of the other questions people are asking about what happened, how much trouble Trump is in, if any, and where the heck we all go from here. Question number one. What is the biggest takeaway from the Mueller report? The biggest takeaway is that Donald Trump isn't uh, going to jail and neither are any of his family members or his closest aides. The truth is that Trump being charged with collusion or obstruction was always very much a long shot. First, it's not at all clear whether a sitting president can even be charged with a crime. Trump's lawyers, led by Rudy Giuliani, insisted that the Justice Department told them they believed the president couldn't be charged while in office, citing conclusions drawn from time during the Nixon administration. A second, this stuff is really, really hard to prove. In order to prove conspiracy slash coordination slash collusion, Mueller would have had to uncover an express agreement between Trump or someone in Trump world and the Russians. And no matter how you assess Donald Trump's intelligence, there's roughly a 0% chance he's going to write a note or an email or put a fax to Vladimir Putin saying, hey comrade, let's coordinate our efforts to, you know, get me elected, comrade. So, in the broadest sense, Donald Trump's mantra of no collusion, no obstruction is, well, right. There was no collusion uh, with Russia, if you can believe this one. Question number two, is the Mueller report filled with only good news for Trump? It is definitely not filled with just good news. There's a gap the size of the Grand Canyon between no charges being brought against Trump and this report being nothing but good news for the president. That's especially true when it comes to the question of whether or not Trump sought to obstruct the efforts by Mueller and his team as they tried to get to the bottom of Russia's role in interfering in the 2016 election. Here are just a few of the examples of how Trump sought to meddle in that investigation. Example one, in June 2017, Trump told White House counsel Donald McGahn to fire Mueller as special counsel because Mueller allegedly had conflicts of interest. McGahn refused. Example two, Trump told his former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, to tell Attorney General Jeff Sessions to tell Mueller, yes, this is all one big game of telephone, that Mueller's investigation had to be limited to how the US could avoid future election interference and nothing else. Example three, when National Security Advisor Michael Flynn flipped on Trump and started working with Mueller, Trump called Sessions in for a meeting again and told him he needed to unrecuse himself on the Russia investigation. Trump told Sessions that such a move would make him a, quote, hero. Question number three. So, what now? The release of the Mueller report is an end, but it is not the end, not by a long shot. Democrats in Congress are already laying out a number of avenues by which they will continue to pursue answers on all of this. They want Mueller himself to testify about his findings before Congress. They want the full, unredacted Mueller report and are planning to subpoena the Justice Department to get it. Then there's the question of impeachment proceedings. Many Democrats were in favor of them even prior to the release of the Mueller report. And in the report itself, Mueller makes clear that Congress could, constitutionally speaking that is, pursue obstruction charges against the president if they so choose. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been very skeptical of pursuing impeachment unless it's clear that such an effort would have bipartisan support in the country at large. Impeachment is a divisive issue in our country. And uh, let us see what the facts are, what the law is, and what the behavior is of the president. And there's just no way that after reading the Mueller report or skimming the Mueller report or reading reports about the Mueller report, Republicans are suddenly going to become convinced that Trump needs to go. Question number four, does any of this change Donald Trump's political prospects for 2020? The short answer here is no. The longer answer is also, well, no. There was no silver bullet in the Mueller report. No smoking gun that showed either the president or someone in his inner circle, his son Donald Trump Jr. or son-in-law Jared Kushner to name two folks, breaking the 
law. Just none. There were lots and lots and lots of details that do make Trump look bad. Make him look petty, angry, scheming, and something that's, well, very short of presidential. But the murkiness of Mueller's report and the lack of a hard and fast conclusion on obstruction give both sides plenty of political ammunition to insist they were right all along about the investigation. So opinions won't change much on Trump because of the Mueller report, but those opinions, they will harden. And that is the point. This has been a special Mueller Report Friday edition of The Point on YouTube. We make new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.